when the CERN or Dajjal forces open their portals and they cut off the internet and we are not online to play nasheeds, how do we connect to the shaykhs as portals? <coughs> well, that's why we said you should have that book now. If you are hoping for internet searches to search things, there's two years of questions and answers on this timeless reality. We said before that the, the shaykh wrote this and, and six other books pertaining to the heart, pertaining to energy, pertaining to Surya Yaseen, pertaining to the reality of Hajj, it was all interrelated on the curriculum that he sent onto this earth to teach. And then how to get Khashya bin Rahman bin Ghaib is through tafakkur. So you should then have your tafakkur there so that you've read it, you made notes on it, you've practiced it when you're at peace and calm and that you believed. And then Allah grant you maghfirah when you practice these practices and give you ajra, give you immense rewards that dresses your soul. So most definitely things will become interfered, things will become difficult and uh, it, it's the belief of people. If people believe that this is the case then based on their belief they will begin to take actions according to their belief. And that's what people have to be concerned about and uh, say then they should be prepared. Everyone should be prepared if people are going to start acting upon their belief. So they should have supplies, they should have money in their homes, they should uh, be meditating, contemplating and making their spiritual connection for a day in which the connection of earth becomes confusing. That's why they're to read Surat Al-Kahf for protection. Well if reading Surat Al-Kahf for the hundred percent of the ummah, you know it's, 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 it's one step below mandatory, Prophet describes as sunnah to recite Surat Al-Kahf, the first three to ten verses and to memorize them. Recite Surat Al-Kahf on Jummah, why? For, for deception of, of difficulties, the people of deception are going to come upon this earth. So then the tariqah doesn't only read that, it's teaching you Surat Al-Kahf to be from Ashab Al-Kahf, why? Because the whole concept of Ashab Al-Kahf is they saw corruption and the corruption and the corrupt king that comes is going to say, worship me or you die. And what they do… As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah described they ran, they ran said death is better for us than for us to lose our faith and become corrupt in our faith. And so they ran Ashab al-Kahf and the concept is that difficulty come that will try to make you to disbelieve because belief they're not interested in, there's no da'wah in their belief. They're not uh, interested in anyone doing da'wah, it's a matter of everyone else losing belief. So if you're going to be put in a place to lose your belief when you have to learn how to go inside. When you go inside then Allah will illuminate the heart in which that world within their cave will become open, right? And who's inside them in their heart with them? Nabeen, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin. That is on all levels of jinn and angels or in all of these categories. So inside their heart with Allah is going to be in the presence of Nabeen, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin. So Allah, Allah inshaAllah will illuminate their inner reality so that they can find their safety and their coordinates, inshaAllah.
Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam. Sayyidi, what is the hikmah of sins? Can sins make people humble? I didn't hear the first words cutting off. What is the hikmah of sins? Can sins make people humble? Hikmah of, of sins is to show that you're nothing. So definitely it humbles people to recognize that they're nothing. And that's why we gave the talk a few nights ago, a few weeks ago that did you think that like you were a purified person? People have emailed, oh Shaykh I've sinned against so many things, I, I, I feel ashamed I'm going to leave. And that was actually very funny for us because I, uh, I was going to email back but I don't email sarcastic things. Is were you under the impression that you were not sinful person? Laylanta subhanika ni kuntum min al-dhalimeen, glory be to Allah. Allah, Allah is the only one with glory and I'm a dhalim. And this is from a Prophet of Allah is making this dhikr. Well, what do you think human beings are? These are the Prophets of Allah glorifying Allah and saying, I'm uh, the first of those to admit I'm an oppressor to myself. And only the one whom acknowledges he's an oppressor, Allah grants him najat. Right? So the second part of that is that we granted a najat, a salvation. Salvation doesn't come to the one who thinks he's good because that's arrogance. Salvation comes to the one who recognizes he's not good because at least then he can repent. And then there are degrees of not good. You're not good and you enjoy it, you go harm people, no Allah will then punish that servant severely. But the one whom struggling to be good but recognizes, no I still have cancer, there's no way I'm cured. And I'm asking for your mercy, I'm asking for your forgiveness, please forgive me, please forgive me. Then Allah grants a forgiveness, a light and a dressing upon that servant. So definitely it, it is the path to humility, you reach Shaykh Daghassani's du'a, the Sultan al-Awliya, you know five years seclusion, five years seclusion, immense, immense trainings. And uh, first thing he's writing is, I'm coming through the door of disbelief and oppression. Why? To teach us that don't ever approach Allah claiming any type of status, negate your status, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. In case you, you didn't catch what you did wrong and Allah is aware of everything, better that you negate it so that Allah agrees with you, yeah, yeah you are nothing and uh, yeah you got a lot of bad things but I'll forgive you and raise you. So this is the whole tariqah logic and, and the whole tariqah way. And that's why other people don't understand, they come with tariqah people and say a couple praises and, and give some comments nice to people and tariqah people say, Astaghfirullah. And so, why did you say Astaghfirullah? I said something nice about you. I said, but you said something nice about me and I may know something bad about me and I'm afraid that Allah will judge me as a hypocrite. So best not to say something nice about the person and just be polite. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa and subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. But the one who praises you and, and says something good, your natural understanding should be astaghfirullah nadeem that uh, make me better than what people think of me. But not to agree with them, yeah I'm, I'm great, thank you. That's what dunya does, yeah oh, thank you, thank you, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa How do we relate the head to dreams? Can dreams originate from the heart? How do we relate the dreams to head? Yeah, the, the dreams are related to everything. If you had ta tacos for dinner, you might have dreams that are related to the spice in the food. So we don't pay any attention to dreams and you shouldn't either. Divorce yourself from dreams and make six levels of divorce against yourself so you can never go back again to it. It's uh, very bad and in these times it's going to be very dangerous. Because we said before you're just a box like a TV lying in bed. If you're interested in just dreams, well what happens? Every jinn come up to you and all night long touch your head and keep sending you TV shows which are called dreams. 
send you this, send you that and you're just being receptive. So the same in your wakeful state, don't listen to somebody complain because you're, you're opening up now your ears to hear negativity. So all of these faculties they have to be governed at all times, not only when you're awake, when you're asleep and you say, I like this kind of stuff, well okay then you go and all night long they're playing dreams for you, sending you information, some true, some false, some foresight of this happening, that happening so that they got your attention. You know when a, a dealer wants to get somebody addicted, they give them some free stuff and they give them one, two, three times free until they're addicted and now you have to come to them for the dream, you have to come to them. So that, that can be very addictive for people. So that's why we block ourselves on that, I'm not interested in that, I actually don't like it, don't want anything to do with it so that they don't try to send something and when they do pay no attention to it so that they keep, oh he's not going to pay attention, oh, forget it. But if the person likes that all day long they're going to do that and if the person likes to listen to things all day long people will be throwing up in your ears to hear problem, problem. And then that overwhelms the system, the energy and the heart. So all of these are very important spiritually inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. When we place the photo of the shaykh in our homes, does that bring their soul in our house? Yeah, we have that in the meditation book, shaykh. That you put the picture there, as soon as you look at their face they're present with you. That's why around the house everywhere you, you can you put that so that other people can see it. also brings the power of the shaykh and takes away negative energy near your computer so you're not doing anything bad uh, in the, the living rooms. Anywhere that people are coming by the door entrance is a picture of uh, Shaykh Nazim on our uh, taweez. Why? So that people can see and if they have a bad intention the energy of the shaykh is there at the door. And that's the same we gave that talk before is that people come and say, why you have all these pictures? Well because it's burning their energies, so it's doing its job because Allah's creation. And when you display Allah's creations that are pious, Allah freed them from their bodies. Their souls are, are present and alive so they have the ability to move with the speed of thought. So it has an immense, immense barakah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah During the time of Dajjal, how many stages of torment will we go through until the coming of Prophet Isa I have no idea, I have it, we have it written, the events of, of the Dajjal, the events of calamities upon the earth and the arrival of Sayyidina Isa salam, the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi salam. But uh, specific levels of torment, I don't know why you want to know how much torment you're going to have. <laughs> let's, let's, let's pray that Allah <laughs> saves us and makes it to be easy for us and that we quickly can enter into the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam. That what we're talking about again is, is uh, through your muraqabah and through your contemplation is to gain entrance into the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi Salaam. And like some people are already like that, everywhere they go they just sleep right away. Maybe they sleep and go straight into the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi So, <laughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi As <laughs> Can you please give some advice on the best ways women and young girls can contribute to the tariqah and the maintaining of sharia in homes and society at large? By serving their families, that uh, the, the women's service in Islam is to serve their families, to raise pious children, to if your husband is in tariqah is to facilitate his learning and to facilitate the time he needs to practice, to train and the uh, importance of an imam. So if there are two whom are practicing the tariqah in the home, it's for the woman to encourage the man to meditate, to contemplate, to make their connection and that she'll take care of the, the children and, and, and uh, the household. 
so that he has the ability, the time and the ability to make that connection as the imam. For if the imam doesn't achieve what he needs but she wants to keep achieving it, well you're going to have a problem because the imam is not yet at that place and you're achieving what is, is not going to be of any relevance. So there's a role to be played in these times of difficulty, right? So if the man in the house is believing in tariqahs, the woman is believing, the children are believing. But we don't put the importance to the man that, hey you should go to spend time with the shaykh, you should do your meditation, you should do the practices, I'll give you the time to do those things. That person needs that because they're going to be the one whom defends the household, who directs the faith of the home. When that's not established but the other person is trying to make themselves the imam of the home, there's going to be a difficulty because they can't play that role, that's not the role in Islam. So everyone if they play their roles correctly then life would be much more peaceful. But even in amongst the, the men the role playing is the same. Everybody wants to do the drums, everybody wants to play a different position. But if everybody just plays their own position then everything is like an orchestra and plays out. But the egos of people are, are very difficult to sort of make and bring peace. So that, that's the, the difficulty. But for now it's very important for the men to feel connected, to feel the energy, to feel they want to wear the sunnah, they want to have that love for Prophet So that's what's most important, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa There's actually quite a bit of questions, the same kind of questions all related to the best way of getting rid of jinn possessions and how to gain shifa and a witch attacking them. But there's many questions all <laughs> about how to get rid of jinns. Yeah those are probably people new so direct yourself towards the, the meditation book, the Timeless Reality book, direct yourself to the website the smcmerch.com for taweezes and all the things where we are sort of sending taweezes worldwide, turbans worldwide and basically people are sort of uh, getting all of these in preparation for very difficult, difficult times. So if you're just joining in now you have to follow our entire system, the moderators will direct you to the book Timeless Reality direct you to the, the merch site so that you can get your taweezes, get the pictures, get the understanding. So these are the sort of uniform that is required that you have to have these that sort of put up on your body, put up on your home. Uh, these are the spiritual fortifications that are necessary for a spiritual battle. And then reading the books, watching uh, videos, you can binge watch any of the playlists to bring yourself up to speed on how to meditate, how to contemplate, how to process energy and how to make the connection with the shaykhs. But uh, just to take away a jinn problem that doesn't happen like that. They're more interested in people coming and following the tariqah than just to take away something that how somebody got themselves into that problem to begin with. So it's not about, oh, I'll just send all these taweezes to all these people I know whom are possessed so that they can take their taweez away because most cases people are doing things or have done things that has, have caused a, a spiritual difficulty against them. So it's not about giving people fishes but it's about teaching people how to fish, how to build themselves, how to make a connection with shaykhs, how to, to improve their energies, how to sort of fortify their practices. It's a whole learning process and in the byproduct is that these spiritual beings then distance themselves because just too much energy, too much difficulty and they move on to someone else that they can attack at a much easier rate. But this becomes a big door that opening onto this earth now is with these things that are happening and these things that they want to come out and declare, this is a, is a big difficulty against the jinn world. That the jinn world is going to inflict a lot of difficulty upon creation because whatever the person says is going to be brought about by the jinn so that it can look miraculous.
<coughs> and this is all with the permission of Allah so it's a very di big difficulty upon this earth, inshaAllah to protect us. Anything from Help Me and then from uh, the other platforms, TikTok, yes. you've got the TikToks, yes. YouTubes and Help Me. These are coming Yeah, he will send you from the Help Me platforms and anybody's got any questions and there's a lot of questions always coming in. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa What's the relationship of the Buddha to Sayyidina Muhammad in the world of light? When the Prophet says, all the Prophets are my brothers, does that include saints from different traditions? The saints of different traditions? Yeah, the, the, the brotherhood of Prophets and the Prophets we know and the Prophets we don't know, that's between them. But on this earth they're not following their Prophet, so don't find a familiarity. So I know where your question is going because somebody says that, you know, this hashish is, is natural and I'm an organic person therefore can I smoke this? No, it's not natural and that's not the, the, the logic to use that the people whom the brotherhood of Prophet and the nubuwa, risalat, that's between them. They know who was a Prophet, what was delivered. As far as on this earth they're not following any Prophet. The practices that they do are idolatrous and the idolatry and the practices of idolatry and, and, and paganism all bring about the anger of Allah and make you lose the, the energy of Allah So those are dangerous when they incorporate these things into these, into these practices. So they can't, they can't put the logic of, this was a Prophet of Allah so therefore I can do these practices. So those are, are very dangerous sort of things. As soon as you anger Allah then you lose that barakah and that blessings. And they also call upon different spiritual beings to propagate their paganism and idolatry, right? The, the concept of the idol is they make a figure and they keep asking from the figure and as a result it's, the figure can't do anything, it's the jinn behind it playing with them. So when they call upon things, mantras and chantings upon things, they're calling upon these nefarious beings and those are, are not beings that believe in Allah And then they create torment and, and difficulty within the homes of people. And then the two can't mix, you can't bring mu'min beings and then all of a sudden bring a statue of Buddha in your home and, and all of those energies that are associated with that. And the house goes up into conflict and difficulty and crashing and smashing and all sorts of difficulty enters into the home as well as angering our Lord and angering the Divine Oneness. So these are, these are, yeah, those are things to be sort of kept away and very far from. Especially in, the, in times of difficulty they keep reminding that these are very difficult times and it's, it's best to be ritually pure. and and purified and to try to, to keep a, as pure a path as possible inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, What is the power of crystals in Islam? Do, do they protect us from negative energy? If yes, which kind of crystal is more powerful to protect us? Thank you for your teachings. Thank you. We have, uh, we have an article on the books and on the stones and the reality of the zikr of stones and, and all of these types of things. But again like anything else the, the protection is in the Divine. So it's not that you, you put crystals around your neck and you're protected. So there's no, there's no power except in Allah So that, that has to be clear because somebody coming and saying that on this channel then all these other Muslim people saying, what are you talking about? Means that the power is only in Allah So our, our power, our meditation is in Allah being pleased with us, our Creator being pleased with us. Now He's given a, a, a zikr and a reality to everything. So salt and salt crystals, the reality of its zikr is to purify. So when you put salt upon things it purifies against bad energy. So. Himalayan salt purifies against bad energy, they can hold it 
and meditate that Allah dress them and bless them and by means of that it, it begins to activate that salt and take away lots of negativity. So those we have in the articles of, of meditation, when they meditate and understand the power of stones, when they wear a ring with stones, the stone has an energy, has a zikr, has a natural zikr that Allah gave to it. Cornelian is a brown stone, aqeeq, and that has a, a zikr that warms the heart because we're energy being. Our energy is interacting with silver, copper, it cleans water, it cleans negativity out of water. They say if you put copper into water it takes away the bacteria and doesn't allow bacteria to grow. So many times they would have copper bowls to drink from. So silver has a way of energizing the body and, and uh, revitalizing energies of the body and the, the stones have a zikr and tur turquoise has its own zikr and power, we said even the color blue will attract negativity of, of people. So we have that article on, on the website on nurmuhammad.com and uh, inshaAllah we can read about it in the meditation book and the understanding of meditation and, and connection. But most important is to rely on the connection first, right? So we go in steps. One is to have your taweezes, next is to make your meditation, make the connection with the shaykhs, fortify your heart. Before you start to rely on, on having rocks and stones in your hand for protection, you have to have the connection with the shaykh. Those are byproduct elements. So like the, if the, the, you're trying to get a healing energy, it has to be a connection through the shaykh that you made that connection. Then you know secondary elements you hold this and you hold that and it can be activated. But when the connection's not there you think you're going to hold the salt rock and keep things away from you. You, probably the only benefit if you throw it at somebody at that time but <laughs> it's not going to work like that. What you need is an energy within ourselves that immediately the shaykh's energy comes and pushes away everything negative. And then that energy brings us into the love and the presence of Prophet and again brings us that energy and that power, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen. People asking for bayat. Or buy it, inshaAllah. Let's go, inshaAllah. A'uzu billahi min shaitanir rajeem, bismillahir rahmanir raheem, in ladhina yubayyunuka yubayyun Allah, yadullahi fawqa idhim, inna ma naghudu nafsina fa bima ahadullahi Allah fa sayyatun ajra nadeema, radhi billahi rabban, wa islami deenan, wa bi Qurani kitaban, wa bi Sayyidina Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nabiyan wa rasulun. Wa baqabilna bi Sayyidina Sultani Lawliya Man Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daqistani, Sultani Lawliya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Adil fi barakat Mawlana Shaykh Hisham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, Inna Man Naqulu Waqeel. Allahu, Allahu, Allahu Haqq, Allahu, Allahu, Allahu Haqq, Allahu, Allahu, Allahu Haqq, Haqqu Ya Rabbi Ya Allah illa sharaf al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa ashabihi kiram wa lam al-shaykhina fi tariqata nashbandiyyata al-adiyya khasatan ruhi man tariqa qabda khaliqa sha'an nashba'an Muhammad Awaisi al-Bukhari sultana awliya shaykh Abd al-Faiz al-Daghistani sadaan shaykh Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani ma'adana shaykh Hisham Kabani, shaykh Adnan Kabani, shaykh Muhammad Adil, ma'abda khaliqa al-Khulish Dawani Sahib Zaman Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi alayhi salam, Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam wa Sayyifullah Sayyidina alayhi salam, Dhumma Sayyidina Bakr Siddiq, Sayyidina Ummah, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam, Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam wa Sayyidatina Fatima Tizar alayhi salam, Ushamat al-Fardani Abdul Rauf wa Yamani Yusuf al-Siddiq, Imam al-Arafeen, Nizalan al-Mutaqalimeen, Arif Tayyad Ma'roof ibn Murhan, Burhan Karam Qawth al-Anam, Sahib wa Sayyid Muhammad al-Mahdi alayhi salam. Wa sayr wa sadatina wa siddiqina al-fatiha. Ameen Ya Rabbi Al-Alameen. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Najjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, 
We have now five bands, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.